Hello everyone, this is Dr. Young, and in this video I want to talk to you about another green metric that we use. So we've talked about uh, atom economy, and I want to talk to you about E-factor. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background, and then I'm going to work through an example and show you how to calculate it for a given reaction. So remember we have these 12 principles. Again, um, in a previous video we talked about the atom economy, which we use the molar masses of the reactants and the products to kind of get a sense of how many atoms of your reactants end up in your actual products. In this video, what we're going to talk about is one of these ways that we can kind of measure how much waste we're producing, and that's the environmental factor, the E factor. So we're going to look at, well, how many grams or kilograms of waste are we producing per every gram or kilogram of uh, product that we actually make? Now, this uh, E factor is different from atom economy. Again, I know I showed you this in a previous video, but just to kind of compare and contrast the two. The atom economy is purely theoretical, right? You just you don't have to do a reaction. You just need to know the equation, and you can look up molar masses and calculate it. And it only talks about the molar masses of the reactants, so not the actual amount that you put in anything. It doesn't have any solvents. It doesn't say anything like that. It's just purely theoretical. You can just you could do the atom economy for any reaction that you want right now. That is different from the E factor. This environmental factor is a ratio of the actual mass. Um, of the waste and the actual mass of the product from a reaction that you did, right? So that's what we're looking at here. You just take the mass of the stuff that you waste that you end up throwing away and you divide it by the mass of your product. So of course, higher yielding products will have lower E factors just because you have more, uh, more product there in the, in the denominator. So, you know, just to kind of look at this, some, some, some general numbers. If I have an E factor of two, what that means is that you have twice as much waste as product, right? Because there'll be two over one, right? So two over one, there'll be twice as much waste as there is product. That's probably not where you want to be ideally. Uh, an E factor of 0.1, or in other words, one tenth, means you produce 10 times as much product as waste, right? So you'd have a one up in the numerator and a 10 in the denominator to get 0.1. So you'd have 10 times more product than waste. That's a much better place to be. You're not really throwing away that much stuff and you've made a whole bunch of product that you're keeping. Um, this is a, a great little list of different parts of the chemical industry. So we have oil refining, bulk chemicals, fine chemicals, and pharmaceuticals. And then just what their average sort of E factors are, you know, sort of across that sector. You notice that pharmaceuticals is not great anywhere from 25 times more waste than product to over 100 times more waste than product. Whereas things like oil refinery, they abuse just about everything, right? They take that oil, they fraction it into all kinds of different uh, parts, and they make use of pretty much everything. So their E-factor, the amount of waste, is pretty low. It's like 0.1. So again, that would be 10 times as much useful stuff uh, as you have actual waste. So you can kind of see across sectors as, you know, oil refining is not very wasteful, whereas pharmaceuticals is much more wasteful. And we'll take a look at an example here in a second to see where all that waste really, really comes from. So some uh, additional notes here, right? The idea is that I, in order to figure out the E factor, I have to actually do the experiment. You can't just sit at home and do this for any experiment you want. You need to go into the lab, really mix things together, really see how much solvent you use, really see how much water or silica or whey papers or whatever it is that you need in order to complete the reaction. You have to actually go and figure out what that is and what that weighs. So you actually need to do that. The kind of downside about this is that you have to like keep track of everything too. You have to weigh, you know, how, how much, uh, how many milliliters of solvent did I use in that recrystallization or in that column chromatography? Or how much did that weigh paper weigh? Or how, many, uh, how much water did I waste when I was doing the uh, vacuum filtration and I was using an aspirator you know, in the sink? Like, how, you have to actually keep track of all these things. And by all these things, I mean the actual reactants, the amount of solvent, the solvent for crystallizations, the weigh papers, the water, the silica for columns, all of the stuff that you use. Not like glassware and stuff, because you reuse that, but all the things that get consumed and are not going to be reused. You have to take all that into account. So let's look at this example here. Um, so I have this Wittig reaction, and I have the procedure, right? I've got one starting material, I've got 10 grams of that, and you react it with thalaldehyde, which is 1.685 grams of that, and they were allowed to react in dry THC, 50 milliliters of it, according to a procedure that was written somewhere else. That doesn't really matter to us. The resulting residue was purified by passage through a six centimeter uh, diameter plug. So someone did column chromatography and they used 65 grams of silica and they eluded it with this one to one, this 50% ratio of ethyl acetate and hexanes to give the compound apparently 2.12 grams of it as a white solid. And then um, I made notes that the 
density of THF is 0.889 grams per milliliter, because I need to know the mass of everything that I use, but I only, you know, you, you measure out solvents by volume, you usually don't weigh them. So my density I'll use in just a sec to get the, the, the grams. Uh, apparently it took 250 milliliters of eluding solvent in my column, so that's how much solvent I used when I ran my column, so that was solvent used. And then I also have the density of the ethyl acetate hexanes mixture, which is roughly 0.778 grams per milliliter. So what I have down here is a little table of, I need to keep track of all the material I used, I need to look at, look at the mass of the product I made, and then I can calculate the E factor. So let's look at this here, right? So my reactants, what were my reactants? These were my reactants. I had 10 grams of this stuff, and I had uh, what looks like 1.685 grams of that. So that would be under my reactants. So I'm going to have uh, 10.0 grams and 1.685 grams. If I look at the solvents that are used, it says you do this actual reaction in 50 milliliters of THF. And it said that I was using a column of ethyl acetate and hexanes and that I use 250 milliliters of that, right? So for the solvents, I have two things going on. I have the straight up THF that I used. So the THF, it said that there were 50 milliliters of THF, but I need to know the mass of everything. So I need to convert this to grams, which is why the density is gonna help me out here, right? Apparently the density is 0 0.889 grams per milliliter. And I can just look that up or it might be in a table that I have in my, my notebook. And if I do that, I see that the THF weighs about 44.45 grams. Now, if I'm looking at my, um, my ethyl acetate hexanes mixture, said that we use 250 milliliters of that, right? It says right down here, 250 milliliters. And that the approximate density of that mixture is 778 grams per milliliter, which would give me, it looks like about 194.5 grams uh, for that solvent mixture. So I'm just, again, I'm just getting the mass of all the stuff that I used. What about auxiliaries? So these would be things that are not solvents and reactants, so things like whey paper or water used for something or recrystallization solvents, uh, or not, sorry, recrystallization solvents would be with solvents. But like in my case, this is silica. So 65 grams of silica, um, that's something that I use to purify this compound, but it's not my product, right? It's just something that I use to help isolate my product. So I'd also have to add that 65 grams of the silica. And so if I add all of those numbers up, the 10, the 1.685, the 44.45, the 194.5, and the 65, I get a total of 315.635 grams. I'm not being a stickler about sig figs here, by the way. We're trying to get a, a rough idea of the E factor. That's the total amount of stuff used in this reaction. What was the mass of my product? Flat out told me that the mass was 2.21, 2.21 grams. So my, the mass of my product was 2.21 grams. So I used, I used 315 grams of stuff and I only got 2.2, only 2.21 of that was turned into actual product. So when I'm looking at my E factor and I'm looking at um, grams of waste, over grams of product, I'm gonna figure out my waste by simply subtracting the amount of stuff I used by the amount of product that I got. Because that means everything but that 2.21 grams was garbage. So if I subtract 2.21 from this, that's gonna give me a 313,415. That's how many grams of waste. That's all this, the massive stuff that did not end up as product. So I'm gonna use that for my numerator here. So 313.45 grams of waste and divided by my grams of product, which is just 2.21. That's gonna give me my E factor. So how much waste over how much product? And again, your waste is gonna be the mass of everything you used minus the mass of the stuff that you got out of it, the product. And if I do that, I see that my, my uh, E factor is gonna be be 141.8. That is my E factor. That's not great, right? That's saying that I produced 141.8 times more waste than I did actual product. That's a lot of waste. That's a lot of waste. That was not a very efficient thing. And we'll see, for example, in the future that doing things like running a, a silica column 
is very wasteful. It's not the greenest way to isolate a compound. Recrystallization, for example, would be much, much better. But anyways, this is an example of how to calculate the E factor. Add up the mass of everything you used, subtract out the mass of your product, and then you just divide that grams of waste by your grams of product, and that's it. So to kind of sum up the E factor, what's nice about it is that it does actually account for all the waste, unlike the atom economy. So it does account for solvents and auxiliaries and stuff like that. Atom economy doesn't even, it, it doesn't even register for atom economy. Um, and you can easily compare how wasteful two different actual procedures are. So if I do a reaction one way versus another way, or I purify it one way versus a different way, you can see using E factor exactly how different um, amounts of waste are produced from that, pro that process. The cons of this is it doesn't really say anything about the waste quality. It doesn't say if it's hazardous or biodegradable. Because if you produce, you know, 100 grams of water, eh, like, is that really a big deal? Is that really an environmental impact? Is that, is that really that bad? Or, or if your waste is super biodegradable and you're going to go, you know, throw it as compost, you know, for your plants or something like that. So it doesn't really talk about the nature of the waste. It just says waste is bad and it considers all, all waste the same. So having water waste or some carcinogenic benzene talk, you know, solvent as waste would be considered equal in using the E factor. Uh, another con of this is that you do actually have to perform a reaction. You can't just like go, go in ahead of time without having performed it. You need to go perform it and get real numbers. And you have to do a lot of record keeping to actually calculate these. You know, so if you forget to measure something, boom, now you can't do your E factor. So anyways, I hope you have a better idea of what the E factor is and how to calculate it and why, how it is different than atom economy. So take a, take a practice at this, apply this to your labs and to your work in the future. Thank you so much. Take care.